What's good y'all? Today I'm gonna to be teaching you guys how to make your own bunny backpack. These bags are great for carrying your essentials and they're a lot of fun to make and to show off. I've made a couple of these bags before and I get DMs every week asking for the pattern. So I figured it was finally time to make one more of these bags and get you guys the pattern and tutorial. The link to the pattern is below. Once you get it, it'll be emailed to you as a PDF and you can print the pattern off right at home. It'll come with some extra notes and some chances to win some free things. Then this video will give you the extra information you need as well as a step-by-step -step tutorial to help make this bag come to life. As you can see, I've done some extra things to customize this bag, but this video will be focused on making this bag in its simplest form. I would say this pattern is in the intermediate range, but at the end of this video, I will be going through some things to help make this pattern a bit more beginner friendly. I hope you guys are as excited as I am. I had been waiting for the perfect time to make another one of these bags, so let's get to it. All you're gonna need is the fabric of your choice, lining fabric for the pocket, foam, the pattern, two one inch rectangle rings and two one inch sliders, a number 10 zipper that's at least 10 inches long, then glue, tape, and rivets are optional but recommended. And a wood rod that's at least 19 inches is also optional. You'll also need some sort of stuffing. I'm using polyfill and you'll need a little bit of heavyweight backing. You'll start by printing the pattern at 100% scale on eight and a half by 11 inch paper. Then you'll wanna measure this little test square here quick to make sure it printed properly. You can start cutting out the pattern pieces now being as precise as possible, I recommend using craft scissors and not your fabric scissors. Once everything is cut, you'll want to start matching the numbered pieces together, so A1 to A1 and so on. There's some pieces that say cut on fold, and you can either cut these on the fold or you can print the pieces twice, mirror them, and tape them together so that you have the full piece. Now the pattern is ready and you're good to go. So you can start cutting out your pieces now, take your time and get as clean of cuts as possible. As you'll cut, you'll want to mark any guides, so there's a few on the face piece and a few on the back piece. Now everything is cut and you can start the prep work. One quick note, there is obviously a left and a right side to the body. So when you cut the body piece, the arm, the face, and the nose, you will wanna mirror those pieces, meaning that you would cut one this side and cut one facing this way. That way you end up having a left arm and a right arm. I'll start with my strap connector pieces and on the wrong side, I'll mark a half inch from the edge on both ends of the long side. Then I'll get some glue within those areas and fold the edge to that line. Then I'll mark the middle and get some glue on the whole wrong side and fold one edge into the line and fold the other edge in so that they meet in the middle. For the strap pieces, I'll mark a half inch from the edge on just one side. And same as before, I'll get some glue in that area and fold the edge into that line. Then I'll mark the middle long ways and I'll mark three and a half inches from the finished edge. I'll spread some glue within that area, including on the folded edge. Then I'll fold one edge into the middle and fold the other edge in so that they meet in the middle. Then for the rest of the area that's not glued, I'll just iron both sides into the middle. I'll repeat that. So once again, marking three and a half inches from the finished edge, spreading some glue within that area, then folding the sides in so that the edges are all lined up perfectly. Then I'll iron the rest of the strap in half as well. Now for the triangle pieces, I'll mark the middle as well as a half inch from the edge on all three sides. The backing pieces should fit perfectly within those two areas with a small gap between them in the middle. Once I fuse the backing in place, I'll mark seven eighths of an inch from the bottom edge and I'll fold this edge up to that line, gluing or taping it in place. The triangles are ready to go, so I'll set those aside for now. Now for the back bar, I'll mark three eighths of an inch from the top and bottom edge and a half inch from the sides. My backing piece should fit perfectly within that area. Then I'll glue it and fold the top and bottom edge to their respective lines. All of my back pieces are prepped now. So my two straps, the back bar, the triangles, and the strap connectors. You'll need to make a handle as well. For the sake of time, I'm not gonna go through the whole process, but I do have a tutorial for a rolled handle that I'll link below. This handle doesn't need to have finished edges since it's getting sewn into the back bar. And also I'll do the pinch one and a quarter inch up from the bottom on both sides. Now that all the prep work is done, we're ready to start sewing. But before we do that, I have a few notes for you. First off, I'm gonna be doing all of the sewing on the seams with a three millimeter stitch length and all of the top stitching with a four millimeter stitch length. Second, it's gonna be a quarter inch seam allowance for everything except for these seams here on the front and back pieces. So just the inner seams and the outer seams are gonna be three eighths of an inch. Everything else is gonna be a quarter inch. And then lastly, I'm gonna be using a Tex 80 bonded nylon thread. 
If you have a domestic machine and can't use that heavy of thread, just use what you can. It'll still turn out beautifully. I'll start by combining my two body pieces right sides together on the edge that goes higher up. Then I'll sew that whole edge from the top to bottom with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, making sure to keep it in line since it is on a curve. I'm going to press this seam open now and I'll top stitch both sides of the seam. So I'll go ahead and do the top stitching a quarter inch from the edge on both sides. Now on my back pieces, I have two marks on the inner curve of the zipper. Within that area, I'll mark three quarters of an inch from the edge and one and a half inch from the edge. Then I can combine the two pieces right sides together and I'll sew from the top down to the first marking, then from the second marking to the bottom. So I'll sew both those areas with a three eighths inch seam allowance, making sure not to sew past either of my marks. Once that's sewn, I'll mark three eighths of an inch from each of my zipper marks and I'll draw a line from the edge to my three quarter inch mark. And I'll cut through both sides of the fabric to that corner and this will allow my edges to fold back to the one and a half inch mark that I made a second ago. Then I can press the seam open in my top and bottom areas I sewed a second ago. And just like before, I'll top stitch both sides of the seam a quarter inch from the edge going from the top down to the point. Making sure not to catch my side edges, I'll be folding back. Then I'll do the same for the bottom area I sewed as well. Now I can fold the side edges out to the one and a half inch mark on both sides and fold the triangles at this top and bottom points up. This will give my area for the zipper that should be three fourths of an inch wide and 10 inches long. Once I've folded everything back, I'll get some tape on all four sides. I'll use this to get the zipper in place in a second. Now for the lining, I'll cut a rectangle piece of the fabric that's 15 inches by 20 inches and I'll mark the middle in both directions. From my middle line on the shorter side, I'll mark three eighths of an inch in both directions and three quarters of an inch in both directions from that middle line. Then from the middle point, I'll mark five inches in both directions to give me my 10 inches for the zipper. Now I'll mark three eighths of an inch inwards from both of my ends and I'll draw in this little rectangle that connects to both corners. Then I'll cut the middle line up to the tip of the triangle and I'll cut out to both corners again and I can fold my edges out to the three quarter inch line now and I'll fold the triangles on the ends back as well. Now I'm gonna get some tape on all four edges just like I did before. My zipper needs to be 10 inches long. If you need to adjust your zipper length, I have a video showing how to do that that I'll link below. Regardless, I'm gonna start getting it in place now, making sure it's even on both sides and that the zipper head is upright against one end of the gap and the zipper stop goes right up to the other end. This part is a bit tricky since it's on a curve, but just take your time and make sure everything is even. Then I'll flip it over to the back side and my rectangle on the lining should match up perfectly with my rectangle on the top side. Just take your time getting this in place to make sure the edges and corners all match up perfectly on the top and bottom. I can top stitch it now, so I'll stitch 1 16th of an inch from the edge going down one side, pivoting and going across, then turning again and going up the other side side going all the way around until I get back to where you started. If you want to make it extra durable, you can also add another box of stitching that's a quarter inch from the first box of stitching. The zipper should look like this now with clean stitching on both sides that catches all of the edges on the top and bottom, so double check that it catches everything. You'll need to close up the pocket too, but I'm going to do that in a bit. I'm going to finish all my strap pieces now, so starting with the strap connectors on the right side, I'll mark one eighth of an inch from the edge on both ends, and on the strap, I'll mark one eighth of an inch from the edge just on my finished side. Now on the strap connectors, I'm gonna start at one marking and stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge all the way to the marking on the other end, stopping with a back stitch, and then I'll do the same on the other side. Now for the strap pieces, I'll start at the one eighth inch mark on my finished edge, and I'll stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge all the way to the end, and I'll do the same for the other side, starting at the end, then stitching all the way to my one eighth inch mark. Then on the straps, I'll mark three and a quarter inch from the finished edge on the wrong side of the fabric, and this is where the strap will be folded back to. Make sure to rewatch this clip to make sure you do it right. I'm gonna take my strap with the wrong side facing up, and I'll go through the bottom of the slider bar and back through the top. I'll match the edge with the line I just drew. Then I'll get a tiny bit of glue on the wrong side and I'll clip it in place, matching the edge to the line. While that dries, I'm gonna make my shoulder straps. So I'll start by marking one and three quarters of an inch from the edge on the wrong side of the fabric on all four pieces. I'll be using these lines shortly to get my foam in place. Now I can take two of my strap pieces, matching them right sides together, and I'll sew a quarter of an inch from the edge, starting at the top and sewing all the way down 
turning at my first corner, sewing the rest of the way down, turning at the bottom, sewing across, then turning again, and sewing all the way back up, making sure to leave the top open. Now I'll trim these bottom corners. This will help them turn better in a second. You only wanna trim about an eighth of an inch off. You don't need to get too close to the stitching. Now I'm gonna cut four pieces of foam that are one and five eighths of an inch wide and 20 inches long. Then I'll take one foam strip. I want the foam strip to be a little skinnier than my stitching so that it sits just inside the stitching on both sides. It's also gonna be a bit longer longer than needed. This will help with turning the strap and then I can trim it to size later. So I'll go ahead and match one edge up from the line I drew earlier and I'll fuse it in place making sure it stays even between the stitching on both sides. Then I'll turn the strap over and fuse another piece of foam on the exact same way I did the first. Once I've done that for both straps, I'll turn the straps right side out. There's lots of different tools you can buy to help with this. I just do it by hand. It is tedious and a bit difficult, but it works. Once it's flipped, I'll roll out these bottom corners the best I can, but they don't need to be perfect because they'll be covered up anyways. I'll check to make sure the seams are even on both sides and that everything is laying flat. Then I'll mark the middle of the strap. This will be my stitch line, so I only need to do it on one side of each strap. Then I'll start at the top and follow this line all the way down to the very bottom. This is gonna help hold the foam in place. Once you've sewn this, you can trim the excess foam at the top too. Now from the bottom edge, I'll mark one and a half inch up, which is right up to the foam. Also, I'll mark a half inch in both directions from the sewing line since that's my middle, and this will be the area my strap connectors go. So then on the wrong side of the strap connectors, I'll mark a half inch in each direction from the middle. The rectangle ring will sit in the middle and I don't wanna get glue on that, so I'm only gonna glue the outer areas and not the middle. I'll go ahead and glue those areas on the wrong side, and then I'll match the edges to the markings on one side of the shoulder strap. I'll get the rectangle ring in place, and then I'll match the edges on the other side. You want it to be lined up perfectly on both sides. Now on the top side of the strap, I'll start where my stitching stopped before and I'll sew across an eighth of an inch from the edge to my other row of stitching. Then I'll turn and stitch back across, finishing with a back stitch. The goal is to get this line of stitching to be perfectly even on both sides. Now I'm gonna add two rivets in the middle here. I'd recommend adding at least one or at bare minimum doing another line of stitching towards the bottom. I'll finish off my strap pieces now. Similar to what I just did, I'm gonna sew from where the stitching ends on one side to where it ends on the other side. I want it to match up on the back side too. So I'll sew across an eighth of an inch from the edge. Then when I get to the end, I'll turn and come back just like before. And this time I'm gonna do a single rivet in the middle, a half inch below the stitch line. Slow this part down if needed, but now with the wrong side, of the adjusting strap facing up and the right side of the shoulder strap facing up. I'll go through the back of the rectangle ring, coming back down and through the top of the slider, then again through the bottom. This is what will allow the strap to be adjustable and it should be ending with the right side of the strap facing up now. I'm gonna get my triangles on now. The right side will face this way and the left side will mirror that. I'm gonna glue these pieces in place and then top stitch them. Instead of folding this edge down earlier, you could sew it on and turn it, but I prefer to do it this way. I think it ends up being a bit cleaner. So I get it glued in with the edge of the strap pressed against the fold of the triangle. Then I'll stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge, stitch down a couple stitches when I get to the end, then come back three eighths of an inch from the edge. So I'll sew on the top side, which will be the side the right side of the strap is facing, and I'll sew on the edge, then go a couple stitches down and come back three eighths of an inch from the edge. Now I'm almost ready to get everything sewn into my back bar, but first I'm gonna mark half an inch down from the top edge, then mark three quarters of an inch in both directions from the middle and inner edges of my straps, which will match up with those marks. So I'll get my straps in place, matching them to the half inch line I marked down and the three quarter inch marks I made from the middle. The wrong sides of the strap will be faced down. That way when the back bar is sewn down and the shoulder straps flop over, they'll be right sides up. So double check this, I've definitely messed this up before. Now I'm gonna mark one and a quarter inch from the middle in both directions and I'm gonna get the handles in place with the inner edges lined up with those marks and the bottom edges being lined up with the half inch mark from before. Then I'll get some tape on both the top and bottom. From the top of my back, I'm gonna mark one and a quarter inch down and another line three and a quarter inches down from the top and then I'll tape my back bar in place so it matches with these lines perfectly. So I'll sew the bottom edge now, sewing all the way across an eighth of an inch from the edge. Then I'll sew the top the same. The top obviously has some thicker parts, so go slow and feel free to gently hammer some of the bulkier areas down before sewing to help compress the fabric and make it easier to sew through. 
if you want to add some extra durability you could do a second row of stitching you could add rivets double stitch the first row and so on now using this marking on the back piece i'll line the bottom point of the triangle up with that mark and i'll clip it in place then i'll go ahead and baste it on so that it'll get sewn into the seam when i sew it all up later now for the head if you want to add eyes there's a marking on the face that's a pretty good spot to add eyes but this is up to you that's a hundred percent just a design choice now i'll sew the nose area onto the face which looks like it won't line up but when you match them right sides together it'll match up perfectly a quarter inch from the edge so i'll sew that on with a quarter inch seam allowance then press that seam open and now i can sew the face pieces together so i'll match the noses right sides together then sew along this edge here so i'll start at the top and sew a quarter inch from the edge make sure to take your time with this and keep things in line as you sew around these tight curves then i'll press this seam open as well it's up to you whether you top stitch these seams i'm going to make the ears now so i'll start by matching two pieces right sides together then i'll sew all the way around and leave the top open however since i'm using a heavier fabric the top is too small for me to turn it right side out through so i'm going to leave an area open on the side and flip it through that so i'll sew from the top down to my first mark then i'll skip to my second mark and sew the rest of the way around leaving that top open and that other area between my two marks for turning it then i'm going to trim the seam allowance about an eighth of an inch to reduce bulk i'll do this all the way around except for the top in the area that i left open then i'll go ahead and flip it getting everything pushed through and i'll roll out the seams to make sure everything is curving nice I'll also fold the edges in a quarter inch in the areas that I turn through. And when I do the top stitching, that will close that gap for me. So I'll top stitch all the way around an eighth of an inch from the edge. This will help your curve sit nicely and it'll close that gap. Just make sure to take your time, especially around that lower curve since it's really tight. Now these marks here are for me to line the ears up on both sides of the head. So I'll go ahead and get my ears within those markings on each side, then I'll base them in place. Once they're basted, I can get the top of the head sewn on, which is a bit tricky. So I highly recommend taping it in place first and potentially even basting some areas like the point of the nose before machine sewing regardless i'll match the point of the top head piece up with the middle seam on the face then i'll start working my way around making sure things line up and making sure the back of the top head piece matches up as well i like to base the areas where the ears are as well and i hand base the point by the nose before machine sewing it but it's up to you whatever you're comfortable with regardless i'm going to sew the top on now take your time with this and really make sure everything stays lined up as you go around especially in the pointy area this is where the basting will help but still things like to shift even if you baste it once it's sewn on just make sure things look even on both sides and make sure the tip is matched up with the front seam then i'm going to trim this area to reduce the bulk so i'll cut some little triangles within the seam allowance and grade the seam a little bit the head is done now if you want to add a little mouth one way you could do it is by starting in the middle a bit below the point and then coming up with some thread and back down at the point then going back up through the fabric on one side of the nose going back down and under the stitch here to the same point on the other side of the nose then coming back up down lower and off to the side here again going through this stitch in the middle and back down here to the other side of the face that would end up looking something like this and now using my front seam as a reference i'm going to mark the middle of the head on the back and the middle on the other two sides as well i'll need these markings in a second to sew the head onto the body i'm going to close up part of the pocket now so i just sewed the top and the bottom but i'm going to leave this back edge open because that's where i'll turn the bag through and then i can sew that shut later now i'm going to take my front and back body pieces and i'll match them right sides together so i'll match the top on both sides as well as the seams on the bottom and i'll clip everything in place between that as well then i can sew all the way around with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance i also like to do a quick back stitch on the area where the triangle is basted on just to give it a little bit of extra strength now i can take my head and get it down into the body and i'll use the marks i made to match it right sides together with the body so i'll match the front seams then i'll match the marks on the sides of the head to the side seams and the back mark on the head to the back seam. This is another area that I recommend basting in place by hand before machine sewing it because this seam is a bit tricky to sew. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand baste that and then I'll take it to the machine and sew it all the way around a quarter of an inch from the edge even though I hand stitched at first, I'm gonna go slow and just make sure nothing shifts or gets pinched. And finally, using the part of the pocket we left open, I'm gonna turn the bag right side out, flipping everything through as gently as possible. But as long as you stitch things well, nothing is gonna bust open. So do what you gotta do and get it flipped through. I'm finally onto the limbs, 
So I'm gonna match two of my arm pieces right sides together and I'll sew all the way around except I'll have to leave a gap to flip it right side out. So I'll make a couple marks and sew from one all the way around to the other mark. I'd say you wanna leave about four inches open or so. Then I'll trim the seam allowance all the way around to reduce bulk and help things curve, except I won't trim in the area that I left open. Then I'll go ahead and flip things right side out, getting all the curves rolled out to make sure everything is nice and even. Then for the legs, I'll take the first one and fold it in half right sides together. I'm gonna sew this edge here, but leave the top and bottom open for now. So I'll sew that a quarter of an inch from the edge. These curves are a bit tight. So again, take your time and make sure things stay lined up. Once that's sewn, I can clip my foot pad in place on the bottom, matching them right sides together with the middle mark on the wider side, matching the seam on the front and the middle of this thinner side with the middle of the heel. But first I'm gonna go ahead and press this seam open like I've been doing. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and sew that on. Feel free to cut little slits around the foot to help it spread around the curves as you sew. Regardless, just go slow to make sure your marks stay lined up and then nothing gets pinched. Once it's sewn, I'll trim the seam allowance like I've been doing as well. Then on the top side, I'll fold this whole top edge down a quarter of an inch so that I have a finished edge on the top for the hand sewing. Now I can get the legs turned right side out through the top, making sure all the seams are still laying nicely once it's flipped. I start with smaller pieces of filling and make sure they're getting stuffed tight in around the curves. Then I can start filling the arm more fully. I like to fill the arm pretty tight, except in this area here. I don't fill it quite as full because I think it makes the hand stitching a bit easier. And then I'll slowly fill that area the rest of the way as I hand stitch. So I'm going to stitch it shut now. If you've never done a ladder stitch before, it's really simple and there's lots of videos out there on YouTube showing how, but regardless, I'm going to get this gap closed on both of the arms. I'll go ahead and fill the legs now, same as before, stuffing it and making sure all the corners and curves are getting fully packed. Then once the legs are done, they should look something like this. I'm going to hand stitch the legs on now using this guide here. So I'll mark three quarters of an inch in both directions from the middle seam, and that will be the inner edge of the circle. So I'll line one guide up there and the guide on the other side of the circle will match the seam too. Then I'll mark the circle out as well as my other two guide marks. Then I'll use the front seam of the leg to mark out three even guides around the leg as well, and I'll match those guides on to the guides on the body. Then I'll start the hand stitching from the inside to hide the knot, and I'll start at the seam and match that to my inner guide on the leg, and I'll stitch all the way around, making sure each mark on the leg matches with its respective guide on the circle I marked out. So just catching a bit of the body, back through the leg, back through the body, back through the leg, and so on. Once the legs are sewn on, they should look something like this with all the marks matching up so that the legs are even and both facing forward perfectly. Now I'll do the arms. So I'll use the arm guide circle and mark it a half inch down from the top seam, making sure it's centered with Within the arm. You'll also want to make sure that the guides are centered too. So just measure across to make sure that the top and bottom guide are centered in the middle. Then I'll draw the circles on the body. I'll match the top edge of the circle with the top row of stitching on the back bar and I'll match the top and bottom guides with that side seam. Then I'll draw the circle out and mark my other two guides as well. Same as before, I'll start from the inside on the seam and match that with my top guide, then hand stitch around the circle, catching a bit of the fabric from the arm, then a bit from the body back to the arm, back to the body, and so on. And I'll make sure my circle and guides stay lined up as I go. Hand stitching through this back bar is a bit tricky because of the heavyweight backing, so you'll definitely want a thimble for this area here because the needle won't slide through quite as easily. Once you've done the arms, they should look something like this, and if you matched all the guides well, the arms should be perfectly even on both sides and facing forward perfectly. Finally, through the hole in the pocket, I'll start stuffing the head little by little, making sure to get it as filled as possible. Now that the head is full. This part is not required, but if you want to add a bit of contour to the face so that the eyes sit a bit more naturally on the sides of the face, you can do so with a bit of hand stitching. You will need a long needle for this, which they sell at Joann's, or you could find one online. I'll start from the inside to hide the knot, then come out right by one of the eyes, then I'll go back through to the other side, come out by the other eye, then go back through to the other side again. Once you've done this a couple times and you pull the thread to create a bit of tension, this will naturally pull the face in and create a nice contour. Once that's done, I'll finish stuffing the body. You can't fill the body up all the way like you would be able to with a normal stuffed animal because otherwise the pocket wouldn't be usable. So it's up to you how much you want to stuff it and prioritize the shape of the body versus having a bigger pocket. I like to stuff it full in the top area of the chest 
right above the pocket and then the bottom of the belly right below the pocket. Then I just add in a little bit of stuffing on the sides just to fill it out a little bit, but not taking away too much space from my pocket. Once it's stuffed to your liking, you're good to go. This part isn't required, but since it isn't stuffed as full as possible, the body and especially the neck area have a tendency to want to sag down a little bit. So if you want to add a little bit more structure, that's where the wood rod comes in. If you run it from the top of the head down to the bottom, it adds a spine in a sense that keeps everything upright. I cut this rod to 19 inches, then I'll get it pushed up as far as I can into the head, then wiggle the bottom through the zipper and get that pushed down into the filling in the bottom. I recommend getting it pushed as far right or as far left as you can to keep it out of the way of the pocket as much as possible. Now all that's left to do is close the pocket. So I'll get the pocket pulled out and I'll fold the raw edges in about three eighths of an inch so that there's no exposed edges and I'll get that clipped in place. Then I'll top stitch it shut, sewing an eighth of an inch from the edge, which will seal that shut so our pocket is fully closed. Once the pocket it is sewn shut the bag is done i am super happy with how it came out i think it has some really beautiful details and it was a great way to use some upcycled materials i did some extra things like the distressing and hand stitching and i added pockets to the ears i think this bag is super fire but it's also going to make a great bag for someone to get functional use out of before you go i'm going to teach you a couple really quick things that will make this bag more beginner friendly and I'm gonna show you the bag on body so you have a size reference. This area on the back bar can be a bit bulky and tough to sew through. I gave some tips earlier to help counter that, like hammering this area down a little bit, but if you're sewing on a domestic machine, I honestly can't say for certain if your machine will be able to handle it or not because I haven't tried it myself. So if you're worried it won't, you could always remove the heavyweight backing from the back bar to reduce the bulk a bit. And if you're still worried about it, you could also even remove one layer of foam from the shoulder straps to reduce bulk even more. Same with on the triangle piece here. If you're worried your machine won't be able to make it through that strap and both layers of heavyweight backing, you could always remove one or both layers of the heavyweight backing. If you wanna save some time and don't wanna do quite as much hand stitching, for the legs, instead of hand stitching those on, you could could just pinch them flat and then sew them into the seam in the same area as well. It would give a little bit different look, but I've seen this done plenty of times before. It still looks great. Same with the arms. Those could be sewn into the seam as well. However, in this case, you would have to change the shape of the pattern piece a bit. However, there's a ton of stuffed animals out there that have the arms sewn into the seam. So you could check some of those out for a reference and try to mimic one of those patterns to make a shape of arm that could be sewn into the seam there. This is what the bag looks like on body. For reference, I'm six foot four. However, the straps of the backpack are adjustable. They're at their longest length right now and this is them at their shortest length. If you are significantly shorter than me though, I'd recommend maybe taking an inch or two off the strap length since realistically you won't need it to be able to go as long as they currently can. Overall, I'm super happy with how the bag turned out. I'm not gonna lie, these bags are a lot of work even in their simplest form, but I think the end result makes it worth it because they're super unique and high quality bags that you can do so much with from a design standpoint. So don't let the amount of work it may be scare you off because I promise it'll be worth it. I hope this tutorial was easy to follow. I know this pattern has a lot of intricacies, so feel free to drop questions in the comments below and I'll do my best to help. If you wanna see more of my work, I'm also on Instagram and TikTok. And if you want more tutorials, make sure to subscribe here. I'm gonna be releasing as many tutorials as I can and I'm gonna be doing giveaways for people that purchase my patterns and even people that just subscribe and comment on here. Have fun making your bunny bag. The end result is gonna be worth it because you're gonna end up with a one of a kind bag. This pattern has so much potential for customization. So get creative, have fun with it. I can't wait to see what you guys make. I love y'all.